that's part of promotion too, is attitude. You gotta be positive. And uh, if you're not positive, don't get in the entertainment business, you don't stand a prayer. You will be destroyed. You'll be eaten alive. You'll be eaten alive. Uh, even when you try all the legitimate stuff, you still get eaten a little bit, as you know. Uh, you still get taken to the cleaners. But what do you do? Do you stop? No, you just go on and laugh about it and do another thing and get kicked in the teeth again. And that's what show business is all about. I've had a whole life of it. I got false teeth now because of it. Yeah, but then, yeah. When you see these figures that the celebrities are making, how much of it do they actually get? Okay, let's take an example. Jim Carrey makes 20 million a film. That's the rate. Now, I figure he gets approximately, by the time everything's paid off, lawyers, agents, managers, uh, publicists, uh, all the people are paid off in his entourage, as they, as they call it, uh, he might get about 40% of that. It could even be as low as 30%. Because it costs money to keep that $20 million image up there on the screen. I mean, how many times can you fall on your back and make people laugh? Or how many times can you stretch your face and make people laugh? Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a big process. It's a, it takes a lot of people to keep a talent that caliber. Jim Carrey, I use as an example because I had the opportunity at one time in his career to manage him, and I turned him down. And everybody said, oh, you're out of your mind. You didn't do that. That's not true. Well, it is true. It happened on Cafe on the Park on Eglinton Avenue in Toronto. I had an opening act. Uh, my, my act was a, a, an escape art, artist. And he did uh, Houdini escapes. And he did magical tricks on stage. And he had about a 45-minute show. And he was the opening act for Jim Carrey at Cafe on the Park. And the last uh, week we were there, he said to me on Friday night, he says, is there a possibility you could come in and have a meeting with me tomorrow? I said, well, sure, if you want. He said, I'll buy lunch. Hey, well, hey, you know me, I'll do anything for a free meal. So uh, I went down early, because uh, we were doing the last show that night, and so I went down early at one o'clock in the afternoon. I said, George, I've got to make some changes in my career. Now, at the time he was doing, uh, he had recorded music, and he was doing all kinds of impressions. He was good at it. He, I mean, he was really good at it. In fact, when you looked at him on stage, he looked like the performer he was imitating. Even with Sammy Davis Jr., I mean, you swear it was Sammy Davis Jr., even though he's white. You know, that's how, that's the kind of face he had. That's the kind of, he had a talent that was unbelievable. Uh, better than anybody's seen in a movie so far. His talent, it goes, is unlimited. He hasn't done his big stuff yet. It's still, still to come. And uh, we sat there and he says, I, I, number one thing you think, I gotta change management. I said, well, okay, I don't know the people you're with right now, but uh, they seem to have done well for the Canadian market. You're doing pretty well, uh, considering it's the Canadian market. He said, yeah, but you gotta break into the American market, right? I said, yes, you do. He said, well, I got a guy, and he wants to manage my career. And I said, well, what's his name? He told me. I said, no, 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 you don't want him. He was the guy who managed Freddie Prince. Freddie Prince was like Jim Carrey. He was very high strung, very, you know, intense. He needed somebody with him that could see what was happening. Or that's why he wanted to commit suicide, because nobody spotted the signs. Well, Jim was heading in that same direction, okay? And that's what he didn't need as a manager like that. He said, well, another one that's offered to manage me is Ron Scribner. I said, oh, you want to stay in Canada longer? Oh, that's, you know, where to go? He said, would you manage me? I said, Jim, I'm going to do you a big favor. I'm going to tell you no, but I'm going to tell you what to do. And if you listen to me, it might work. Sell everything you've got, get a one-way plane ticket to LA, fly down there as a visitor. If you have to sleep on somebody's couch or on the front lawn of some place down there when it's warm, I said, and do all the free shows you can do at the comedy clubs. Turned out that Roger Dangerfield was one of the people that came in and saw him in the club, in uh, the comedy store, and that's where he performed. And the manager of that place, I got to talk to him because of the John Candy Film Festival, and he was telling me the story of how I used to sleep on his couch all the time. I said, well, I'm the bugger who told him where to go and how to do it. <laughs> so, you know, we laughed over that because it made his career. Uh, he uh, took my advice and 
met up with a guy and teamed up with him, a guy by the name of Tom Shadiak, who is now one of the best directors Hollywood's got. Uh, he did Pet Detective. That was Jim's first big movie. Uh, it doesn't show his talent fully at all. The closest mo movie I've seen to Jim Carrey and being the real Jim Carrey, as you know him, is Liar Liar. If you've seen that movie, that's the closest to the real Jim Carrey. But that's still not his talent. His talent has still not come to the surface yet.